Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our day number. Today is our lesson number 156. 156, day 3156. 3 is to signify the fact that we're in the third edition, third edition, day 156. We are in the process of solving the math problems from the two practice tests two practice tests that you will find at the end of the book. We are in second test, practice test number two, on page number 485. Make sure the book is in front of you, open the book, turn to page number 485, and as you turn to page number 485, you will see there two pie charts. What we are given in reality are two pie charts. We are given two pie charts, one for the manufacturing sector, one for the manufacturing sector right here, manufacturing, and we are given another pie chart for the service sector. But instead of drawing the pie chart, I just gave you the chart, I just gave you the data here, just to keep it simple. But what we are dealing with in reality are two pie charts. That's why it's important that the book is in front of you so you can see exactly how the question appears in the exam, okay? So this is the information we are given. We are told that of all the workers, for example, there are two, two sectors they talk about, two sectors of the industry that they talk about, of the economy, the manufacturing sector and the service sector. So what we are told here is that of all the workers that are unemployed in the manufacturing sectors, of all the workers that are unemployed in the manufacturing sectors, and we are told that there are 10 million such people, there are 10 million workers in the manufacturing sectors that are unemployed. Of those 10 million, 40% have been unemployed between 1 and 4 weeks, 20% have been unemployed between 5 and 10 weeks, 11 to 14 weeks, 10% are 10 of all the workers who are unemployed in the manufacturing sectors have been unemployed between 11 and 14 weeks. And 15, 15 to 25 weeks, 18 percent, and finally 12 percent of the workers who are unemployed in the manufacturing sector turns out have been unemployed for more than six months, 26 weeks with more than six months. Similarly, here's the data set for service sector, 56 percent, 16 percent, 5 percent, 14 percent, and 9 percent. Let's look at the first problem. It says, number 17, it says degree measure, degree measure of central angle for workers unemployed from 11 to 14 percent, that's what we're dealing with here, 11 to 14 percent, in number 17, this is what we have to look at. Degree measure of central angles for workers unemployed for 11 to 14 weeks in manufacturing is how much greater than that of service industry. So we're comparing manufacturing versus service. And as you can see there, manufacturing, 10 percent of all the workers, 10 percent of all the workers who are unemployed in the manufacturing sectors have been unemployed between 11 and 14 weeks. For manufacturing is 10 percent, service sector is 5 percent. It turns out in the service sector of all the people who are unemployed in the service sectors only 5 percent are unemployed between 11 and 14 percent. The question is if we were to show these two in the pie chart as they do, the degree measure would be how much greater for manufacturing computer service. That's what they're saying. And as you can see, the difference is 5%. The difference is 5%. It's a very straightforward question now. The question simply is 5%, 5 what, what the question boils down to is this. What the question boils down to is this. 5% of the whole circle, 5% of the whole circle, whole circle is how many? Degrees. That's what they're asking for. That's what they mean by central angle. Central angle simply means if you had, if you, if you were to show a certain slice of this, if you were to show a certain slice of the circle, which represents only five percent of the whole circle, well, how many degrees is that? Well, it's very straightforward. We know. We know the whole circle. We know the whole circle. is made up of is made up of 360 degrees that that we do know the whole circle is made up of 360 degrees if we have a whole circle there that will be 360 degrees if that's true then that implies that 10 percent of the circle if the whole circle is 360 degrees 10 percent must be 36 degrees 36 degrees 
but we don't want 10 percent. We want to know we want to know how many degrees is 5 percent of the whole circle. But if 10 percent is 36 degrees, that if you were to divide both sides by two, on the regular, if we divide both sides by two, we'll have our 5 percent. We'll have our 5 percent. So that in turn implies that 5 percent must be 36 divided by 2, which is 18 percent, uh, which is 18 degrees rather. These are 18 degrees. Do you understand? So the answer here is 18 degrees. I erased the question, but the answer is 18 degrees. It says degree measure of central angles, degree measure of central angle for workers unemployed 11 to 14 weeks in manufacturing is how much greater than that for service industry? And the answer is the difference is 18 degrees in terms of the pie chart. That's all. If you're curious as to how people did in, in this question, about half the people, when this question appeared in the real exam, about half the people got it right. The percentile is 51%. That's the number 18. That's the number 18. Yesterday, in yesterday's video, I don't know exactly what we were talking about. I do not recall as to how it came up, in what context. But we learned, we came across the vocabulary word, bro. And I told you later on that I was going to tell you at the end of the video what it means and I never got a chance, I forgot about it. So let's count it to there. What does it mean to brook? To brook means to be able to tolerate, to handle, to stomach, uh, to, that's it, to, to, to tolerate, to handle, to stomach, to endure, there you go, to endure, brook. And it's a word, it's a word that we learned on day four of our vocabulary words, in our vocabulary lessons rather. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, if you're interested in improving your vocabulary uh, in order to get a decent score in the verbal part of the exam, just type in vocab GRE vocabulary words, day four, and the video will pop right up. Watch it and learn it. You understand? For example, for example, an employer, uh, your boss might tell you that uh, incompetence, incompetence and indolence, indolence, incompetence and indolence is, are one thing, but I cannot and will not brook dishonesty. In other words, if you're incompetent, in other words, if you do not do some job properly, I forgot what the other adjective I used, uh, what, what, what was the other noun I used? Incompetence and indolence. There you go, it's right there. If you're la in indolence means to be lazy. Indolence means to be lazy. And incompetent means to do some job poorly, to do not to do not do a job as you were expected. You, you were incompetent. And your boss is talking to you and, and he is telling you that incompetence and indolence are one thing. But I cannot and will not brook dishonesty. In other words, I will not put up with dishonesty. I will not, I cannot handle it. I cannot tell, I will not tolerate it. I will not, in, I will not uh, put up with it. If you are dishonest with me, you will get the boot. I will fire you immediately. But once in a while, if you are a little lazy or if you, if you are incompetent, if you don't do something properly, well, I can deal with that. I can teach you how to do it properly. But if you are dishonest with me, that is not something I will broke. Dishonesty is something that I will not broke. I'm sure we learned about indolent as well. We simply, indolent simply means to be lazy. It means to be lazy. I don't know if I should spend the time right now looking for it, but I'm pretty sure we learned it. In the older vocabulary that we have there, vocabulary videos that we have, we, I'm sure we learned it. If you just give me one second, if it comes up, I can find it very quickly, fine, if not, then we'll move on. No, I cannot find it, but I'm sure we learned it. Number 18. Indolence would be the noun of indolent. Do you understand? Number 18, it says, which of the following? Which, or rather, which could be, which could be the median Length of length for manufacturing for manufacturing workers unemployment for at least one week. And they repeat this thing throughout the throughout the four question, throughout the four question they repeat this phrase for at least one week as if it has big meaning. It does not. It is just there to annoy you, because obviously if you're starting from one week, if you're starting from one week and all the way up to 26 or more weeks, then saying that for all the workers who are unemployed for at least one week 
simply means that of all the workers that you see there. It doesn't say at least 11 weeks, in which case we would have seen from 11 to 14, we should we would have seen these three categories. It doesn't say at least 15 weeks. It doesn't say at least five weeks. It says at least one week. We don't need that. It's for all the workers, which could be the median, which could be the median length for manufacturing workers or employment that you see there. And median, as we know, median, as we know, means 50% of people has to be one side, 50% has to be on this side, 50% of the people on the left side, median has to be right in the middle. So let's look at manufacturing and see where the 50% falls. 40% of the worker, 40% of all the workers who are unemployed in manufacturing have been unemployed for one to four weeks, as you can see right there. So that's 40% of all the workers. Then you go to the next category, the workers who have been unemployed between five and 10 weeks, and we find that in manufacturing, further 20% of the workers have been unemployed between five and 10 weeks. But well, there you go, by the time you get to, by the time you get to five to 10, by the time you get to five to 10, we have already, we already have 60% of all the workers. All the workers that are unemployed, that is, do you understand? All the workers that are unemployed. So where do you suppose 50% 50 50 is gonna fall? Well, 50% is gonna fall in this, this category, obviously. Because here we have, here we have 40%, we go on the 10%, on the 10% will fall in this category. Which means the median, median, we do not know, we cannot tell exactly what the median number of weeks is for, we cannot tell for sure what the median number of work, weeks is for people who have, been un, who have been unemployed, who are unemployed in the manufacturing sector. If they ask you exactly what is the median number of weeks that workers have been unemployed in the manufacturing sector, the answer is we cannot say that. We, can, we have no way of knowing that, but we do know that whatever it is, it has to be between five to 10 weeks. It has to be between five to six weeks. Median has to be, median has to be uh, between five to 10 weeks. That's what we can say here. There is, way, there is no way for us to give, us, give them the precise number of weeks. Now we look at the answer choices, and of all the answer choices that we see, only one answer choice will fall between five to 10 weeks. All the others are gonna be either too low Maybe they will say three weeks or maybe two weeks or they're going to say something more than 10 weeks. Let's look at the answer choices. We are at number 18, do you understand? Well, we are on the next page now. We are no longer at 485. If you turn the page, four number 486. Well, there you go. The very first one they give you is 4, 8, 12. So it goes like this. 4, 8, 12. It goes in the increments of 4, 16 and 20. That's right. Well, obviously it's not four weeks because up to four weeks is only 40% of the worker. Median is 50%, it's gonna fall in this category. And it, so it's gotta be between five and 10, it cannot be 12 or 16 or 20. There we go. Which is why they use the six, uh, the, hence, hence this use of the phrase could be. They're not saying is, they're not saying which of the following is, it says which of the following could be, because we have no way of knowing exactly what it is. Do you understand? We cannot tell exactly what the median number of weeks is for unemployment for the workers in the manufacturing sector, but we can tell that the median length of unemployed, unemployment for the workers in the manufacturing sector has got to be somewhere between five to 10 weeks. And hence, eight is the answer there, because that's the only one that works. If you're interested again, as to what the correct, uh, what, what the percentile was, about half the people, about half the people had no trouble with it, 49% of people got it right. 49 of the people got this question right. Let's go to the next one. It's not the it's not the fact that 49 people people got it right. What is disturbing is that half the people missed it. As a matter of fact, more than half the people, 51 percent. Okay. Next one. It says if if one worker if one worker were to be selected, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of writing. Okay, so be patient. If one worker were to select, if one worker were to be selected, and you would go on to say at random, which I'm not going to put here, if one worker were selected, if one worker were selected at random, because that's very important, obviously, what are the odds? What are the odds? Or what is the probability, if you like, that that the worker, that the worker selected that the worker selected
is from service industry and has been unemployed for more than 26 weeks. So one, one more time, we're looking for the probability, we're looking for the probability that if you were to pick one worker at random among all the workers that we see here, and we'll come to that in a second as to how many exactly we have, the question is, what's the, what's the probability that he happens to be from a service sector, somebody who's from service uh, service worker, and has been unemployed for more than 26 weeks. Has been unemployed for more than 26 weeks. This is 26 plus, you understand? Have been unemployed for more than 26 weeks. That's all it is. We just have to figure out how many such workers are, how many such workers are there altogether. Number of workers who who are in the service sector, who are in a, belong, who belong to service sectors and have been unemployed for more than 26 weeks. Well, it's right here, nine percent. Nine percent of all the workers in the service sectors are, or have been rather, unemployed for more than 26 weeks. But the next question is, nine percent of what? How many total workers are there in service sectors who are unemployed? The answer is eight million. Eight million. So the top is going to be nine percent of eight million of all the workers that we're dealing with in the pool and how many old how many workers do we have altogether? Well altogether we have 10 million in the manufacturing sector, manufacturing sector rather, and 8 million in the service sector. So the total pool is 10 plus the total pool is 10 plus 8 million. And this is what we have to figure out. Let's do it on the top. Let's do it on the top. Nine percent, nine percent of eight million. We're going to pick up from here, okay? Nine percent. How do we write nine percent in decimal? Nine percent in decimal will simply be 0.09. Do you understand that? And off, off means times, and then we have eight. Millions is not going to play any role because they have the same unit on the top and the bottom. They can cancel out. It's not like we have millions on the top and billions on the bottom. They're not different units, so we don't have to do any adjustment. They can cancel out. So we have 0 0.09 times eight over 18 over 18 let's multiply let's keep it simple instead of dealing with 0 0.09 I don't like dealing with 0 0.09 let's multiply top and bottom by 100 shall we let's multiply top and bottom by 100 so that this 0 0.09 times 100 when we multiply it it will just become 9 so we'll have 9 this 0 0.09 0 0.09 times 100 will become 9 and then we have times 8, and on the bottom we'll have 18 times 100. Are you with me so far? Let's divide top and bottom by 9. If you divide top and bottom by 9, 9 will go away and 18 will become 2. So far so good? Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 2 will go away and 8 will become 4. There we go, we have, answer is 4 over 18. Uh, 4 over, uh, sorry, 4 over 100. Well, 4 over 100 is 4%. Question was, what are the odds that if you were to pick one worker at random among these workers that we see for manufacturing sectors and service sectors, 10 million and 8 million, if you were to pick one worker at random among these, uh, from these 18 million workers, what are the odds that that person that we select at random is someone who belongs to the service sector and has been unemployed for more than 26 weeks? And the answer is, it is a 4% chance. Do you understand? That's all. Again, if you're curious about the percentile, now this is going to be confusing because that is a percent and this is a percent, but you understand. About half the people who took the exam had no trouble with it. And by the same token, half the people got it wrong. This is number 19, wasn't it? Yes, this is 51%. That 49 was from the previous question. This is 51%. The percentile is actually a little bit higher. So we can quite comfortably say that more than half the people got this question right because more than half the people did get it right. Let's do number 20. Let's see, we're done with this thing. Just give me a little short break.
Number 20. Number 20 says ratio of workers who have who have been unemployed who have been unemployed five to ten weeks in manufacturing sector to service sector. That's it. We're, look, we're simply looking for the ratio of the number of workers who have been unemployed for 5 to 10 weeks, number of workers who have been unemployed for the length of 5 to 10 weeks in the manufacturing sector to the service sector, the ratio of the two quantities. So let's find out, shall we? So, where do we go? Five to ten weeks. Oh, we are here. So why don't we, why don't we get this part? Why don't we get rid of this part? We no longer dealing with one to four. Let's go on. We're not dealing with that part. There we go. We're looking for five to ten right here. Five to ten. We know twenty percent of the workers who are unemployed in the manufacturing sector. Twenty percent of those have been unemployed between five to ten weeks. Twenty percent of what? What twenty percent of ten million? So that goes on the top, 20% of 10 million. That's the manufacturing. That's the manufacturing. Let's look at service. Service is 16%. 16% of what? 16% of 8 million. 16% of 8 million. And again, this is manufacturing. This is service. So let's reduce this, shall we? Let's reduce it. See what happens? Okay, stay with me in this story. First thing first, first, millions are going to drop out. If you divide top and bottom by million, if you divide top and bottom by million, they're going to drop out. Percent, percent simply means, when we say, when we say 16%, when we say 16%, that is same as saying 16 times 1 over 100. Are you with me? So if you have 16% on the bottom and if you have 20% on the top, 20%, that is same as 20 times 1 over 100. So if you wanted to, you could actually convert this percentage sign into actually fraction and then cross them out or simply understand the concept that the percent on the top, let me use a different color, the percent on the top is going to kill the percent on the bottom. Do you understand? So far so good? Let's carry on then. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 4. I'm just, I'm just doing whatever comes to my mind here, whatever I see here. If you divide top and bottom by 4, 20 will become 5 and 16 will become 4. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. 10 will become 5 and 8 will become 4. And that's all we can do. So it's not much, there is not much else we can do here because now we are left with prime, we are, we are left with prime numbers on the top and not only that but they are not multiple of 4 even if they were not prime. Even if they were not prime they are not multiple of 4s. So there is not much we can do. That's it, that's our answer. So what do we end up, what do we end up on the top? We end up with 25, 5 times 5, 5 times 5, we end up with 25 on the top, and 4 times 4, 4 times 4, 16 at the bottom. That's the ratio we're looking for. That is the ratio we're looking for. And now we look at the answer choices, and that's where we have to be a little bit more creative. We could actually sit there and figure out what that is, one point, whatever it is, and then do the same division with every single answer choice and see which one comes closest. They should use, they must use, they must have used the word approximate somewhere. The ratio of the number of, the ratio, I'm reading now question verbatim from the book. The ratio of the number of manufacturing industry workers who were unemployed for 5 to 10 weeks to the number of workers of the service sector who were unemployed 5 to 10 weeks is closest to, you see it's closest to, they're just looking for approximation. That's all we can do here. We're not going to have a precise, precise match here. So let's, let's look at the answer choices. We need the room. I'm going to get, get rid of all of this thing. Actually, let's just leave it here. Let's look at answer choice A. Answer choice A. Answer choice A says 5 to 4. 5 to 4. Okay, listen, the, listen carefully now. 5 to 4. 
when we're trying to see if this is same as that, as I said before, we can either divide 25 by 16, it will be one point something, and then divide this and see exactly see what it is, one point something, and then see whether or not they match or they're very close to each other. That's one way of doing it. I don't like to do that. Another method, to, for, without having to do any work, any calculation, is simply, listen carefully, is to simply convert, mash the denominator of this guy to the denominator of that guy, or the numerator of that guy to the numerator of that guy, and then make your decision, does that look anywhere close to each other? I'm going to show you both ways. Let's match the denominator. This is 16, this is 4. Let's multiply top and bottom by 4. And if we do that, we can clearly see that what we have is 20 over 16. We want 25 over 16. That is not the answer. Or, or if you want, sometimes it's easier to do the other way around, depending on the nature. Because you see here, 4 happens to be, 16 happens to be the exact multiple of 4, but sometimes that's not the case. In which case, you may try to make the numerator the same. So this is 5, this is 25, let's multiply top and bottom by 5. In which case we'll end up with 25 over 20, and we can clearly see that 25 over 20 is not the same as 25 over 16. It is not the answer. A is not the answer. Let's look at B. Let's look at answer choice B. B says 6 over 5. 6 over 5. I don't like it. I don't like it because there's not much we can do. 6 is 25 is not a multiple of 6. 6 16 is not a multiple of 5. I don't like it. Let's keep it in abeyance. In the real exam, I will just leave it alone for the second, just for a couple of seconds. We have learned this word abeyance. What does it mean to keep something in abeyance? To keep something in abeyance simply means, let's keep it aside. Let's keep it, let's not touch it right now. We'll deal with it later. Abe to keep something in abeyance simply means, let's keep it aside. We'll deal with it later. To keep something in a state of inactivity. To keep something in a state of inactivity. In other words, it simply means, let's keep it aside, let's not deal with it right now, we'll come to it later. Again, if you want to learn it, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day number 9. So let's keep it aside, let's move on to C. I don't like it. We'll come back to it if we have to, maybe we'll find something that will work out just fine, who knows. The next one says, 3 over 2, 3 over 2. Does it? 3 over 2. Again, you see here's an example, here's an example. 16 is a multiple of 2, 25 is not going to work out, it's 25 is not an exact multiple of 2, so we'll just match the bottom one. Let's multiply top and bottom by 8. As we multiply top and bottom by 8, we get 24 over 16. Well, 24 over 16 is what we get, and they're looking for the closest, they're looking for approximation, they're looking for closest answer. Would you agree that 24 over 6 is pretty close to 25 over 6? I would say C is a very good candidate. If I were taking the real exam, I wouldn't worry about B because D, B is just too insane. C is, C is very good. Let's look at D very quickly. Let's look at D. D says 5 over 2. 5 over 2. Very. So this is 2, this is 16, let's multiply by 8 over 8. And if you do that, 8, 5 is a 40. 40 over 16. And 40 over 16 is not what we're looking for. We're looking for 25 over 16. So given the choice between 24, 24 over 16 and 40 over 16, it's just too far away. Even if you didn't have that one, that's too far away. D is not the answer. Let's look at E. Let's look at E. Let's do it up here. Let's look at E. E. We'll look at E and then we'll look at B. What does E say? E says, uh, e, is, uh, e is again just as insane. E is again just as insane. And that's where, that's where you have to make your decision as to how quickly you can think. Keep in mind that we were looking for 25 over 16. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of speed so that, so that we can, otherwise we'll be here forever. Can you approximate this exactly how many times 7 is 25? That's where the key is. That's where you have to pay attention. Otherwise, if you cannot do what you do, this is good enough. We found the answer. Had it been real exam, I would have picked it and moved on. I would not have wasted my time working with D or B because they are too insane. 24 over 16 is pretty close. Do you understand? But here, if we were to multiply top and bottom by 3 and a half, if you want to multiply top and bottom by three and a half, let's see what we get three. Three and a half times seven. Are you with me? Let's begin. Seven times three, seven times three is twenty-one. Seven times three. Seven times three is twenty-one. Plus plus what? Plus half of seven. Half of seven is how much? Half of seven is three and a half. There we go, you see? 
21 plus 3 and a half, we're already up to 24 and a half, which is exactly what we wanted because top is 25. So now since top is very close to what we have there, we'll see how far the bottom comes. Eight, 6 times 3 is 18, and half of 6 is 3. So we end up with, what we end up with is 24, 24 and a half over 21. Is that, is that approximately same as, do you think that is approximately same as 25 over 16? Of course not. 25 is fine, 25 is approximately the same as 24 and a half, but look how far the bottom is. It doesn't work. It does not work. Do you understand? It's not going to work. So here, what did we try to do? We tried to mash, we tried to mash the numerator. We converted 7 to something as close to 25 as possible by multiplying it by 3 and a half. Or, or, if you want it, if you want it, we could have done the other way around. Instead of, instead of, instead of trying to match Instead of trying to make the numerator, we, should, we could have tried to make the denominator. And in the denominator we had, in denominator we have 25 over 16, don't we? 25 over 16. 2 times 12, 2 times 6 is 12. We want 16. We need 4 more, which means 2 thirds. 2 thirds of 6. 2 thirds of 6. This is too much work. You understand? This is just for learning purposes. So as you can see, 6 times 2, 6 times 2 is 12. And a third of a third a third of six would be two. Therefore, two third of six would be four. And now we have in the bottom exactly what we need, sixteen. And we'll see whether or not the top comes close to twenty-five. So, seven times two is fourteen. And seven seven times two third would be fourteen third. Would be fourteen third. So that's 14 plus 14 thirds. 14 thirds is 12 thirds. 12 thirds is 4. 12 divided by 3 is 4. So it's 4, 4 and 2 thirds. This is getting me too insane, you understand? And we end up with 18 and 2 thirds over 16. No, we don't want 18 and 2 thirds. We want 25. It's not going to work. Yeah. Let's look at D. It's not going to work. Let's look at D. D is also rather whatever it is that we left aside. Let's look at B. One more time, I'm pointing it out that had it been real exam, when we found something that came close to 24 over 16, that is your answer. C is the answer. All of this is just for learning purposes as to how to go about the approximating. B is what we're working with, and B was 6 over 5. 6 over 5. Remember, we want to get to we want to get to 25 over 16. 25 over 16. So what can we do? Well, this is 5, this is 16, let's multiply by something little more than 3. Something little more than 3. That's how we write, that's how we write is something more than 3. In reality what it is is, 3 times 5 is 15, we need another one, so we need another 1 fifth. Technically it should be 3 and 1 fifth, but we're not going to worry about that because that's going to be too insane. Something little more than 3, in other words, something little more than 3 times 5, something little more than 3. More than, we're not saying something more than 3, something more than 3, it could be 37 million. Something just a little more than 3 plus times 5 is going to be something more than 15. Something a little more than 15, which comes close to 16. Which means the top should come to close to 25. 6 times something more than 3 is just going to give you a little more than 18. Something little more than 18 is nowhere close to 25. It is not the answer. The answer is... The answer is C. The answer is C. And the C one more time. Answer was very straightforward in C. It was 3 over 2. Simply multiply top and bottom by 8, and that gives you 24 over 16. And 24 over 16, you can clearly see is the answer. Little under, little under half the people who took the exam got this question right. 45% of people. Tomorrow we'll start. We'll pick up from question number 21. We have five more to go, and we'll be done with this section. Okay. Bye now.